Hello everyone, I am Professor Vaibhav Shah. Welcome to my channel. In today's lecture, lecture 20, we'll be learning how to draw a superior trochoid. If you like my content and teaching style, then like and subscribe to my channel to show your love and support. Now, let us begin. Problem 1. Draw locus of a point 5 mm away from the periphery of a circle which rolls on a straight line path take circle diameter as 50 mm. So here we have to draw the locus of a point 5 mm away from periphery of the circle. So that means our point is outside the periphery of the circle and if the point is outside the periphery of the circle then the curve generated by this tracing of the point will be a superior trochoid and it rolls over a straight line path obviously so it is a special case of your cycloid just like your inferior trochoid this is the second case of your cycloid which is a superior trochoid in this case our point would be outside the periphery of a circle so here we have to take the circle diameter of a rolling circle as 50 mm as our diameter. So let us start. So this is the procedure of our superior trochoid. So let us start as usual by drawing one circle with the given diameter. So we have to draw the rolling circle with the given diameter 50 mm. After that we have said that we have to trace the path 5 mm away from the periphery of the circle. So before that we have to just finish the construction of this rolling circle. So after drawing this rolling circle you have to draw one straight line or your tangent line from your rolling circle. The length of this line must be the circumferential length of this rolling circle. So the circumferential length of this rolling circle would be pi d and here the diameter of this rolling circle is 50 mm. So that's why our circumferential length of this line or the straight line length would be pi into 50 and whichever is the answer you have to draw that line length here. After that you will locate this point P which is 5 mm away from this circle. So this is our given circle and our point is 5 mm away from this circle. So this will be the location of your point P. So after getting this point P you have to adjust on your rounder this as your center and point P as your radius you have to draw one more circle and which will be our generating circle. So let us draw the generating circle. So this is our blue circle which is a new circle which is known as your generating circle. So let us understand here in this case we have two circles one the black circle and one another larger diameter circle a blue circle. So now black circle is a rolling circle. Why? Because it will be rolling over this straight line path and this blue circle will be generating circle from which our curve would be generated. So blue circle is your generating circle and black circle would be your rolling circle. So after that we have to divide this generating circle into eight number of equal parts and after that we will number give numbering to this circle. So let us start with this point P always as a zero point. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and 8. In your exam you have to compulsory write 0 and 8 at this point. Now we have to draw one center line from the center of the circle like this. This line must be exactly parallel to this line and must be of the same dimension of this line of circumferential length. So it must be parallel to this line as well as of the same length of the line. After drawing this line, we have to just divide this line into 8 number of equal parts. So let us divide this line into 8 number of equal parts. So this line is length of pi d. So we have to divide this pi d length of line into 8 number of equal parts. So let us divide this line into 8 number of equal parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. After dividing these 8 parts, we have to give the numbering. So let us give numbering C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7 and C8. After that, we have to draw lines parallel to this center line. This is known as center line. 
So you have to draw lines parallel to the center line from your points, passing from your point P, point one and seven, from your point two and six, from your point three and five, and from your point four. So you have to draw lines parallel to this center line. So let us draw the lines from your point P first. We have drawn line parallel to your center line from P, from one and seven, from two and six. The line is already drawn from three and five. And from point number four, these all lines must be parallel to your center line. After that, you have to adjust on your rounder the distance of CP, or you can say the radius of your larger circle. So, you have to adjust on your rounder the distance of CP. After adjusting that distance, you have to put your rounder at C1 center, and you have to try to cut this line passing from your one point. So you will cut this line somewhere here, so you will get this point here. After that, you will take the C2 as a center, and you will try to cut the line of two somewhere here. After point, after you have to select uh, center C3, and you will cut the line of three somewhere here. After you have to select your point center C4, and you have to cut the line of four here. Then after you will select center C5 and try to cut the line passing from your five somewhere here. Then after you will select your center C6 and you will try to cut the line of six somewhere here. After that you will select your center C1 and try to cut the line of seven, which is this somewhere here. And finally you will select your center C8 and try to cut the line passing from your eight points. So in your case, this will be your eight point and eight point will give this line. So you have to cut this line vertically here. So this will be your final point. After that, you will identify these points. So let us identify these points. So you identified these points. Now let us denote these points by P1. Then here, P two, then here, P three, P four, P five, then here, P six, then P seven, and P eight. After adding buying points, you have to simply connect these points by a dark smooth curve. So this is nothing but your generated superior property. Very easy, but you have to remember that in this case, your curve would go below this circle here and here also below this line your curve would go additional distance below your circle or line like this so this is your curve very easy this curve is similar to your inferior trochoid the difference is that in this case your point is outside your circle and in the case of your inferior trochoid the point p would be inside your circle that is the only difference so now let us see one more problem based on the same principle so you get the better idea so problem 2 a two wheeler model passes over a straight road to check its performance the diameter of the wheel is 60 mm construct the curve generated by a point outside one of the wheels at a distance of 40 mm from the center of the wheel while it completes its one revolution. So here we are having a one two wheeler and will be given one diameter of the wheel of the two wheeler as 60 mm. So which diameter of wheel will be rotating on a straight line path and we have to construct the curve generated by a point outside one of the wheel. Outside the wheel means it will be generating your superior trochoid. Whenever your point is say to be outside your circle or your wheel it would be your superior trochoid and the point is at a 40 mm distance from the center of the wheel and we have to trace this curve for one revolution or one rotation of your wheel it is obvious so let us draw two circles first circle which will be your rolling circle so this is your given rolling circle or the uh, circle which is of the diameter of the wheel, which is your diameter of the wheel, so which is your 60 mm, and then another circle which is having the point which is 
40 mm from the center so this is your center so the point p would be 40 mm away from your center if your point is 40 mm away that means the diameter of that circle would be of 80 mm so you have to generate one larger circle with the 80 mm diameter and the smaller circle with the 60 mm diameter this smaller circle would nothing be uh, your wheel and which is also known as your rolling circle which would be actually rolling over your straight line and this uh, larger diameter circle would be your generating circle which is actually generating your superior trochoid. So now larger diameter circle is your generating circle and this smaller uh, circle is your wheel or your rolling circle. So now after that we have to divide this larger diameter of circle into 12 number of equal parts. So let us divide it by 30 degrees, 60 degree into 12 number of equal parts. After dividing this circle, we will start numbering from this point here as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. After that, we have to divide this straight line path into 12 number of equal parts. But let us define this straight line. So, this will be your directing line. Now directing line length is always exactly the length of your circumferential distance of your rolling circle. So this is your rolling circle and if the diameter of rolling circle is 60 mm, that means your directing line length would be pi d distance length. And here the diameter would be 60 mm that of your rolling circle. So your distance of your directing line or your length of your directing line would be pi into d so pi into 60 which will be 251.2 mm so let us draw one straight line or a tangent line from your bottom point of your rolling circle as your 251.2 mm after drawing this line we have to divide this line into 12 number of equal parts we will start from here numbering 0 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash 5 dash 6 dash 7 dash 8 dash 9 dash 10 dash 11 dash and 12 dash after that you have to simply draw vertical lines to get your centers c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 c7 c8 c9 c10 c11 and c12 so this is nothing but your center line with the center c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 c7 c8 c9 c10 c11 and c12 after that you have to simply draw lines parallel to the center line from each of the points from point p line parallel to your center line from your points 11 and 1 draw your line parallel to your center line from your point 10 and 2 draw line parallel to your center line from your 9 and 3 draw line parallel to your center line but here in this case 9 and 3 is already a points on the center line that means you need not to draw lines from 9 and 3 it is already drawn now you have to draw lines from 8 and 4 parallel to your center line you have to draw lines passing from 7 and 5 which must be parallel to your center line and your line must be passing from your point 6 which must be parallel to your center line after that the final stage we have to take out our rounders so take out your rounders. Now adjust your radius exactly equal to the distance of C till point P. So adjust on your rounder distance of CP, the radius of your larger circle, which is 40 mm. So adjust on your rounder 40 mm radius. After adjusting your radius 40 mm, put your rounder at C1 point and try to cut the line passing from your one point. So this is point number one. So try to cut the line of point 1 to get this P1 point. Now put your rounder at C2 point and you have to cut the line passing from your 2 point somewhere here to get this P2 point. Put your rounder at C3 point, try to cut the line of 3 points. So this is 3 point, this is line of 3, you will have this point P3 here. Try to put your rounder C4 center and try to cut this line of 4 somewhere here. Put your rounder at C5 center, cut the line of 5 here to get P5, put your rounder at C6, try to cut the line of 6 here to get P6, put your rounder at C7, try to cut the line of 7 somewhere here to get P7, 
put your rounder at c8 to try to cut the line of 8 somewhere here put your rounder at c9 and cut the line of 0.9 which is also center line to get point p9 here put your rounder at c10 and try to cut the point tens line here this will be point here p10 put your rounder at c11 and try to cut the line of 11 here so this is the line of 11 this is point 11 this is the line passing from your 11 point and finally put your rounder at c12 point and try to cut the point 12 line here to get this point p12 after having all these points you have to simply join all these points by a smooth dark line and this curve would be nothing but your superior trochoid why it is superior trochoid because we are tracing the path of point which is some distance away from your rolling circle outside the periphery of your circle that means this curve is your superior trochoid because your point is outside your rolling circle. So this is all from my side. If you enjoyed the lecture, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel to show your love and support. Keep learning, stay connected. Bye-bye.